Mario Wonder may have lacked in the boss battle department, but as far as its final boss, it was actually pretty fun. And it had me go back and think which 2D Mario game had the best final boss. So instead of just going one by one and talking about them, I figured I'd throw them in a ranking. So I took 11 boss battles and threw them into a big list, including games like Super Mario Bros. 2 and even Mario Land and Mario Land 2 as well. Before we dive into these games and figure out which game had the best final boss, I want to say I hope you guys have a happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving day if you guys are celebrating Thanksgiving today and that you guys just have a nice day watching this video Watch this video as you're eating some turkey and tell me what you are thankful for down below I'm thankful for my family friends God and of course you guys So sit back relax and unwind and watch some 2d Mario boss battle goodness the first one we have on our list is the original Super Mario Brothers, and let's just be honest, we knew this one probably was going to start the list. It is a classic game to be remembered. The final boss battle doesn't even feel like a final boss battle. It feels like the same boss arena that you fought over and over and over again throughout the entire course of the original game. I just feel like, you know, you run past them, hit the switch, and you're done. It doesn't even feel climactic, especially the last one. They could have threw some more things in there, but it's just the same thing. Maybe it's a little harder than the others, but besides that, it's nothing that special. Coming in at number 10, we have New Super Mario Bros. DS, which ideally takes the same exact thing from the original Mario Brothers and just kind of, you know, redoes it. And I get why they did this, because it feels like a whole remake of the original Super Mario Brothers in just like a new fashion but yeah it's pretty much the same thing and this time you have bowser jr to fight against which you can just spam with fireballs and jump on his head a couple times and then he's gone but yeah you're just getting past bowser and hitting the switch and the battle's over before it even starts and considering the fact that you don't really need to even fight bowser jr if you don't want to yeah i just feel like this boss could have done a lot more especially considering the fact that it was one in one of the only new super mario brothers games that actually had original boss battles uh so yeah this one kind of Heard. Next up at number 9, I chose Super Mario Land. I actually thought it was different than what we've been getting, and technically, some could say that there is more dynamics around New Super Mario Bros. DS with the background and the details of the characters and stuff, but I look for more of fun in gameplay, and this is actually one of the few times we get something different, and I didn't think it was absolutely terrible. It was kind of fun to have a shoot 'em up for once with Mario as you took out this cloud that was flying around the room, and then boom, Tatango would pop up. So, kind of, it was a two parter, and you had to also dodge all of its flying orbs that he would shoot out so yeah I thought it was different and to have Mario in an airplane for a final boss I thought was pretty unique next up I chose Mario Brothers 2 King Wart's final boss where you have to throw a vegetable into his mouth but the problem with this even though it is very unique is the fact that it's just very tedious and sometimes you will just sit there missing over and over and over again and it just goes on forever it's not really that difficult when it comes into terms of taking damage but I just think it's a timing thing you know when to throw the vegetable and dodging the bubbles that he shoots out but besides that it gets very repetitive i just like the uniqueness of actually doing something different and having to physically throw something in his mouth instead of just getting to the other side of him and hitting a switch coming in at number seven we have the final boss from mario brothers 3 which is pretty much you just running away from bowser now this time you're not running away to hit a switch no you actually have to lead him in order to actually kill himself you have to have him break the blocks in order to drop into the pit down below, which actually can pose a little bit of a threat the way Bowser moves sometimes. He'll also be shooting fire at you, so it's not just one of those that you just, you know, completely blow through without any type of skill at all. You have to know where to place Bowser and also watch out for his attacks at the same time. Having to fight Bowser without actually fighting him was kind of cool at the time. Coming in at number 6, we have New Super Mario Bros. 2, which is actually a two-parter as well. The first one will have you running through a corridor, dodging fire in order to get to the the other side of Bowser once again to hit the switch, something that we have seen plenty of times. But phase two actually has you going up multiple sections in order to reach the top where there's a giant switch. But there's a giant Bowser in the background that's swiping at you and breathing fire at you, and there's lava rising as well. So you have to watch out for that while jumping on the platforms to make your way to the top. And there's lots of subsections where he'll actually stop in order to swipe you or breathe even more fire on you like a giant laser. It's pretty cool actually, and it's more of like an aesthetic thing rather than a super fun engaging boss battle but at the same time it's a really nice
nice one to at least look at. Just feels a whole lot more climactic than it actually is. Now down to our final five, we have number five, Super Mario World. Now this final boss I like a lot because it actually takes some skill to take him out. He'll fly to the left and right on the top of the screen and it's your job in order to throw a Mecha Koopa up there and hit him in the head while he's flying around in his clown car, which means you have to time your throws in order to deal damage. Now it's definitely not like anything super crazy or very difficult at all. I definitely think it's pretty cool how he's like flying in from the background into the foreground and he's also using different things like giant cannonballs that drop on top of you and stuff and shooting fire from the sky. I just wish the background and kind of stage itself had more elements than just like flashing lightning and a black screen in the back. But besides that, it's actually a boss battle that does require you to be pretty good at the game. At number four, we have Mario Land 2. Fighting Wario in three different phases I thought was pretty cool. In the first phase, he's kind of just running around the room like crazy. You have to jump on his head three times and also watching out for his weird chandeliers that are dropping things on you like bombs. I, I, I don't understand that. But at the same time, it's really cool to run around the room fighting Wario and not actually like avoiding him and hitting a switch or something this time around. Phase two actually allowed him to have the bunny hood like Mario and fly around the room and try to land on him from the sky, which is pretty cool. And phase three gave Wario a fire flower allowing him to have the fire flower effect, throwing fireballs at Mario across the room. I really like this because it takes like all the elements and all the items from the game and actually incorporates them into the boss battle as well, which is something that Nintendo sometimes doesn't do, especially with 2D Mario games. So I'm glad that they actually incorporated the items into the final boss, not only Mario having them, but the final boss being Wario having them as well. Coming in at number three, we have New Super Mario Brothers U, where you actually once again have to get past Bowser in order to hit the switch in order to drop the drawbridge, but part two, he also once again gets gigantic, and this time you have to actually hit him by taking Bowser Jr.'s clown car when he flies down with it, flying up in the air, and then drilling it into Bowser's skull, technically. And then you have to do this three times times he turns into a giant shell and bounces around the stage it's actually kind of different the fact that you actually get to throw hands at Bowser and actually damage him is kind of unique and I actually enjoy that aspect I like seeing these spiraling clouds in the sky that are all like red and black and then the lava emitting from underneath the castle as well it's just a ton of details that go into this awesome boss fight as well that makes it so good Not to mention Bowser has the most dramatic death I have ever seen in a Mario game Coming in at number two, we have New Super Mario Bros. Wii, which is kind of the same formula once again. Once again, you start off by fighting Bowser on the drawbridge, having to get past him in order to hit the switch in order to drop him. In phase two, he gets enormous again, and this is like actually the first time we've seen Bowser get big like this, and it was awesome. I also love the aspects of the way Bowser looks in this boss battle as well. His eyebrows and hair is actually like has this flaming fire effect to it, and he just looks a lot scarier and more of a menace is here. But it's your job to get to the end of this section by letting Bowser destroy the path for you with his fireballs and he's chasing you drastically trying to defeat you. The music is intense. The atmosphere is intense. It feels so surreal and especially when you run out of terrain and you have nothing left but a couple of floating platforms and nothing below you but lava. Not to mention Bowser will create some gigantic gigantic lava waves and it just feels so climactic to get to that switch like you're actually sprinting to it this time it doesn't feel like you need to just sit and wait around and play around with bowser and thankfully it's not a very easy boss for sure it might take a couple tries on your first playthrough for the best 2d mario game final boss i chose super mario brothers wonder i mean Honestly, when I played this, it definitely was not that difficult, but goodness gracious, I had a ton of fun and wanted to keep replaying this boss battle because there's just so much in it. So it's your job to jump off of these moving platforms that move to the beat. So you actually have to turn your volume up and listen to the beat and follow the rhythm in order to jump at the right time in order to give Mario a protective barrier in order to damage Bowser. You can take out his hands in order to have him stop attacking, and then you also have to hit the underside of his chest where there's a switch there. The attacks here are so creative as you have these fiery music note prana plants coming after you and you have to jump on the beat in order to jump over the big ones as well. There's multiple little phases you'll go through each time you hit them. For instance, the floor will separate into two sides going off on opposite beats, which means you have to be on the right side and jump at the right time and pay attention to the beat on each section in order to jump from that section, which is super cool. Eventually, the floor will split into even more sections that you have to be aware of in order to attack him on 
on beat, which is also just amazing. Not to mention that this boss isn't just a three hit and you're done. There's multiple different hits that you'll have to do on him in order to take him out and even take out his hands in certain situations as he will actually guard the button and block it with his hand. And there's even a final part where you have to platform all the way to the top in order to hit the final switch on his head. It's just so good. And the music of the actual boss battle is actually being incorporated into the gameplay of the boss. I mean, come on, you could not ask for much more than this. This was a really great way to end Mario Wonder. Once again, a game full with music references. Being able to have a music themed boss battle in order to take out his head at the end was just so such a cherry on the top. I mean, come on, Nintendo. But let me know down below what you think is the best 2D Mario final boss. Did I get this list right? Is there something that you would change around? Let me know your list down below and let me know why you chose what you did. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe before you head out. A lot of you guys watching this video right now are not yet subscribed, so let's see how many we can get to subscribe from this one video alone. But thank you for tuning in and have a great Thanksgiving day and I'll see you all on the next one. See you guys.